This one, uh, I asked you guys if you wanted this. I didn't think there was a lot of uh, desire out there for it, but uh, maybe it has some value to a lot of you guys. I asked if someone had a conventional oil burner. Now understand, we stopped using conventional oil burners in the early 70s. And so everything since then has been what's called a flame retention head burner. And it's more efficient. It's about 20% more efficient than the old conventional burners. And so by far most of them are gone. But there are some left, and I kind of, I'll go over kind of a demonstration of it and so on like that. But while I'm not really thrilled with using fuel oil as a heat source, I think it's something we should probably move beyond. But it's still out there, and if you're going to burn it, and a lot of people, you know, it's just the way it's going to be, a lot of people will be using it, and we should be using it as efficiently as we can get the most out of the oil. Replacing it with a uh, flame retention head burner is going to use less fuel, uh, more efficient burn. That's all there is to it. Uh, most of the things that I'm talking about are applicable for most changes of burners. If you're changing out a burner, uh, whether it's flame retention or conventional, uh, most of this stuff's going to apply because I'm going to talk about first thing I'm going to talk about is filters, and then I'm going to demonstrate the uh, how the uh, older conventional style works and what the difference is between that and the flame retention head, and then we'll go into the the uh, guts of uh, of the replacement. Okay, so let's get started on this, and we're going to look at the filter first. Okay, this is the old uh, general filter that was used on, uh, seems like millions of oil burners. It's a uh, cartridge type filter inside the can. Uh, it's, uh, some of the old ones are felt, some of the new ones have sort of a plastic sort of filter in them. I'm not going to take it apart, I'll refer to a video that I did about taking these things apart and cleaning them. This, I don't really think this thing should be used anymore. There's still plenty of them used and, and they still work, but you want your oil as clean as possible and that's really not the way to do it. There's too many things in there that can get contaminants in the oil. And uh, just the whole, the, the whole idea of it's wrong. Uh, this is a newer type filter. That's a Westwood. It's fine. I don't, you know, I'm not pushing anybody's filter. But this is a spin-on filter. As an interesting aside, uh, this type of filter used to be used on automobiles. Not that particular one. But you would pull a can off and it had a filter element inside and you would replace the filter element inside and clean it all out. And that's how you change your, your filter in your car. Well, we stopped doing that in the late 50s, I think. And we started doing this, uh, this type of filter. Not this particular one, but, but we started using spin-on oil filters. It was just a can that you just spin on there, take one off, put the other one on. It made a lot of sense to do that because the service was much simpler on it. Uh, less chance for leaks and so on. Uh, I mean, they did that for cars, you know, in the late 50s, early 60s. And we're still putting this, these filter cartridges in some of these old general filters. And I think it's pretty much time to get rid of those. So I'm going to go over how you would put, replace this assembly and put this assembly in. Okay, here we have the canister and the setup. Uh, I haven't put the fittings on it yet. This one comes with a uh, 
a vacuum gauge on it that shows if there's restriction in the filter canister. So if there's a vacuum pulled on here where there's not enough uh, oil being pulled through, this thing will uh, go down into the vacuum. It's just, you can see it's got a green, a yellow, and a red. I think, boy, if you got up to 15 inches negative, that would be uh, pretty plugged. Anyway, we're going to put this thing all together. One thing I wanted to note, we do not use uh, Teflon tape. The pump manufacturers will void warranties if you use Teflon tape, so you just use uh, pipe dope. And here we have the fittings put in, and I'm going to show you where it's mounted. It's kind of a hokey mount. Uh, it's just a kind of a temporary oil tank I've got set up there, but uh, I'll give you an idea how that works. One other thing I should note, this is a little bleed port. You just loosen that thing up once you put your new canister in and uh, let it bleed until you get the, the air stops and you just get oil coming out. When you're ready to install the canister, I usually put motor oil on this little gasket here. They do recommend you put something. You can use fuel oil, but I usually try to use like zoom spout oil or something like that. So I'll put that on the gasket just before I put it on the, uh, on the mount. Now here we've got it mounted and I'm ready to bleed the valves open. Now I will say one thing that I would not do under normal circumstances. I've got that canister just hanging on the pipe. Uh, under normal circumstances, you're better off putting it up against a wall or something like that. There's a bracket that comes with it that's kind of nice to, to use if you can. Uh, this will work, but it's, it's not very, it's not something I'd recommend. This setup is a uh, movable, I move it all over the place all the time, so I don't put a bracket on it. But I wouldn't recommend you do that. Now once this is on and the valve is open, you're going to bleed this thing. Now I've cracked open that bleeder and it's going to piddle around there until I get uh, pure oil coming out of it. Clean up all around it, make sure it's dry. Leave the newspapers down there. If they got oil on them, take them off, put new ones down. Because once you do your service on this thing, you're going to want to come back here and be sure there's no leaks. And that's how you put the filter on, the new fancy spin-on filter.